I'm, I was only going to give her life. Hi. We're going to give you guys a few seconds to join. Welcome to the first ever happy hour series. It's a design series with Danny Russo. And I'm going to have a special guest artist every week. I hope you guys can hear me. I am, I have earbuds in, but we're going to have a special guest joining us in. Do you have to invite him to join? He, needs, he needs to request to join. Um, Brandon, if you can hear us, request to join in. Hopefully, we're going to give it a few seconds. But today we're going to be talking about interior design. And we're going to be talking about making a dark and stormy cocktail. Moody Design. Brandon, are you there? Caller, I can't hear you. <laughs> oh my God, I can hear you now, I think. Hey. Oh my God, welcome. Are we live? We are. Okay, I can't see you, but... <laughs> That's unfortunate. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so happy that you're my first guest. I just rushed oh, I, home to do tell. this. I know. Um, hopefully, are you going to be making a drink with me? Because uh, I can't make one, but I do have one. Okay, I'm glad you have one. I'm starving oh. artist. I can't afford all that stuff. Come on. <laughs> yeah. So we're going to be talking about moody design. And this is my first in a signature series of Happy Hours with Danny Russo. I'm happy that Brandon Spivy is my first guest. Did I say your last name right? The, the eyes long, Spivy, but. Spivy, Spivy. Brandon Spivy. And you're a photographer based out of Columbus, Ohio. Am I, do I got that right? To me? Yeah, you. I'm an artist out of, out of Columbus, Ohio. You're, you're, you don't do photography? Why do I think you're a photographer? I have, I have a lot of photography equipment. <laughs> I just don't know how to use it. <laughs> um, same. If you saw our setup right now, I'm going to take you over to the bar and we're going to make this drink real quick. Oh, nice. So we're going to be talking about, we're going to be talking about dark and stormy hues. Cameraman, are you going to follow me? Yes. So we have Ugh. a bar. <laughs> I need someone to follow me. Can I get the ice from the freezer, please? <laughs> so we're going to be making a dark and stormy. Now, if you know anything about me, I enjoy a good drink sometimes. I've never actually made them. So this is an experience for me. So we're making a dark and stormy, which is kind of a rum-based cocktail <laughs> and it <laughs> originates it originates we gonna drink i don't know what it is but we gonna drink it well, you're right? gonna drink it it's in a bowl <laughs> so we i'm lucky enough to have a great office staff that got all of my ingredients ready i feel like martha stewart right now so my ah. give me another glass <laughs> and i'll really make you one as well so to make it dark and stormy the history of dark and stormy it comes out of Jamaica. Jamaica is known for their rum, from what I hear. I tried to do the history of the of the Dark and Stormy, and all I can get that it, the rum factories are all in Jamaica and the Caribbean. I was highly offended one time when my husband went on a cruise without me, and he brought me home a bottle of uh, Captain Morgan's. So I was, he's like, oh, here's this special alcohol that they only make in the Caribbean. I'm like, is the divorce final yet? I go, this is a, this is a Captain Morgan's. Like they make that everywhere. So <laughs> I was a little offended. He also brought me a hat back that said Grey Goose on top. And I'm like, am I a pool boy now too? <laughs> so, <laughs> so dark and stormies. You always want to start with ice. I used square ice cubes. We always want to get at least four into a tall glass. If you know anything about me, I love to order my drinks. My drink of choice is a Grey Goose soda with two limes tall. So what we're gonna do here, and I hope I understand this right. So we, to make it dark and stormy, we use ginger beer. We've got our square ice in there. We fill our glass two thirds up with ginger beer. And I kind of like extra alcohol, especially, especially for a day like today. Oh, get your Santa Lee on, girl. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> Two shots so, of vodka. <laughs> we are making dark and stormy. So this is going to be interesting. So we've used ginger beer. Um, I've heard that Gosling's ginger beer is a yes. great option. Um, this will be the first time I've had it, I think. And we want to use some lime juice. So we want an ounce of lime juice. And did you know that a shot glass is actually an ounce? The bars I go to, shots don't come like this. <laughs> no. So... A shot of lime juice in here and we are going to stir this little concoction up 
Don't you love how I'm so prepared with this? Oh. So, Dark and Stormy, the reason we chose this drink for our first one is because, oh, my design style kind of could be considered dark and stormy and moody. So, this is a great drink, I think, on the beach. I had one the other night. <laughs> so, oh, so what you were I, on the beach the other night. Oh. No, I'll be on the beach in, later today. But we are, do you see how I'm tilting this glass? So the stormy part of this is that we have the clouds coming in to the top. Why, how did I end up on a bartending show? <laughs> um, can I have one the more? The stormy's always the top. <laughs> um, <laughs> so I'm slowly pouring this in with my, um, what do they call these things that go on the top jigger. of the jigger? Um, ch jigger? Or the, poor, <laughs> the poor spout, the poor spout. So if you hold your glass tilted, that's how you get the storm cloud effect on there. So was I supposed to mix this too? So now we have our lime juice. This was so easy to make. I used a can of ginger beer, a shot of roses lime, and apparently this is the best sweetened lime juice. Oh, yeah. Um, Too good and tart. Yeah. And then, like me, <laughs> I've heard you're quite the tart. <laughs> uh, Guilty as charged. Do we have any viewers watching? If anybody who wants to ask us any questions, feel free to. And we have people reading in the comments. Oh, yeah. In the comments. That's wide open. Okay. So, I'm not sure if I'm supposed to stir the rest of this, but this is what a dark and stormy looks like. I'm very impressed with myself that I just made this. No, I think it looks delicious. I know, right? Um, I think I need more alcohol. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh. If you are on a diet and you do not like sugar, this is probably not the drink for you. Mm -hmm. Or I would substitute. That'll get your diabetes all out of control. I know, right? So these are some lovely dark and stormies. Cheers to you. Miles is my assistant today. He's running the camera. So we're going to go right over along here. Do you like my set design? <laughs> I, I'm just sitting at a dining table, so. See, I'm more elaborate. We have a tripod on wheels, full lighting. Oh. <laughs> um, if you saw this background. Starving artist. <laughs> so tell me about your art. What kind of art do you do? I know I've seen it online a lot. But tell me what's your art style? So it's, um, a lot of people consider me to be a person who paints with joy. Now, kind of getting, you getting to see like the interaction, personality, a lot of my artwork is an expression of like the happier part of me. Um, so I take a lot of that interpretation and through color, shape, um, and then just composition. Do you paint a lot of abstracts? Totally abstract. I've done one figurative piece my an entire three year career that I've had, one piece. <laughs> and I still to this day, it was just me and a bottle of tequila on the floor with some paint markers and some paint and I whipped it up and it was hot. It was that's the hot. best way that's the best way to create. Um, I've been around friends who were um, trying art out for the first time. And I watched them actually go into somebody's kitchen and grab spices out and start putting them on the painting. And I'm like, I don't think this is how art works, but I'll no, go with see, it. this is why people's food is not seasoned. <laughs> <laughs> so, what are your favorite colors to work with? Do you do acrylics? Do you do oils? So, I am a multimedia artist. So, I uh, work in primarily acrylics, um, then oil is my second. Okay. So, um, the painting behind me is one that's gonna be in a show coming up in Granville in a couple uh, weeks, but it starts out as a acrylic base and then I build up color. And then when I get to a point where I just think I need some pops of color and richness and depth, I'll switch to oil because the ranges of oil colors are a lot broader mm -hmm. and they're just so much richer and pretty, almost like lipstick. And I, I, clearly don't have any lipstick on. But. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna, well, I'm gonna take that expression a little bit further as it comes to interior design. When people don't use accessories or art on their walls, it's almost like you have what I call the naked room syndrome. It's like you've gotten this great base, but all of a sudden you just stopped and people don't think about what to put on the walls, what kind of treatments they want. And I probably lived in my house 
for a good 10 years not knowing what I wanted because art's very personal. And I ended yeah. up just picking up things along the way. Um, but the pops of color in my designs typically come out of the artwork. And yeah. I love working with local artists. Um, I'm looking at what, these questions that I have for you. Oh. <laughs> what <laughs> artwork would Brandon incorporate into a Danny Russo project? What type of artwork? So I think with you liking to, and this is kind of cool because for me, I like your aesthetic and how you use darker colors in the whole mood. So for me to be able to bring in something like this off of a dark wall, whether it be black, gray, my work is going to be. I wish I could see your wall right now, but I can't. Uh, can you show it to me? Show me, a, can I have your phone mouse? <laughs> um, I'm gonna look at it in a second. Yeah, I tend to, I, when I paint, I think of like mid-century modern Palm Springs. So that's where a lot of the bright colors, I think of like giant windows and I think of um, like Holy the grass. Wow. Like uh, you, you sent me this or somebody, that's a lot of color. Yeah, I'm not afraid to, to slap the paint on there and make it work. Wow. But I like that because you can have a very neutral background where it can be stark white or black and let your art work for you. There's a big misconception about me that all I do is paint walls black. And <laughs> I totally do not do that. <laughs> um, you should, because all walls should be black. I paint my ceilings black because that gives <laughs> the illusion of space. Um, but the only two times that I have painted walls black is when I was featured in the Columbus Museum of Art. And that gives you a real, that brings us back to the dark and stormy or moody hues. But that pop of color, in the artwork that's behind you, you can use that anywhere. Yes. Um, very versatile. And that yeah, so like, I create with home interior in mind. How long did that piece take you to create? Oh God. So it was actually a quarantine piece. So when we started <laughs> getting put into lockdown, yeah, I had nowhere else to go. So I'm like, let's just let her rip. So it was a good <laughs> four or five days of me just kind of working here in the house on it. Yeah. Um, sometimes I can, I can be quicker. Um, so did you spend the time. full like eight hours a day? Because a lot of people don't realize like you can go to art.com or these random places and find a cheap piece of art. But a lot of people don't appreciate the time that goes into creating a one of a kind piece from an artist. So if you were painting eight hours a day at three days, I mean, you have what, 24 hours? Oh, yeah. Into that. And as artists, you're probably working more than eight hours if you're anything like me. Because um, it's in the house. So, and at that point, we were, I wasn't going anywhere, so all I did was just paint, 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 and before I knew it, a few days later, it was done. I'm like, <laughs> all right. Do you ever look at your work and think that it's not done? Like, Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I've got three in the studio on the wall now that I'm, I'm looking at, and I'm like, will you ever just be done? But <laughs> sometimes it's an evolution, and it's a journey, and you have to remember that it's, it's not a race to get to the finish line. It's, right, it's right. a marathon. <laughs> it's a marathon. It so, I've not run out of gas yet. <laughs> Have you done any um, commissions for people that are specifically just for a certain style of interior? I have. Um, for me, I prefer to really just create. Um, if you have something in mind and someone says, well, I really like with this color. Um, I've done some work with contracts and stuff like that. I want to be able to just have free control. You tell me what colors you like and what style, kind of, and let me just loose. Um, Do you I ever have somebody come back to you and say, well, I don't like this? Not yet. I, I mean, I have. And I, I mean, my, my interior design is an art, and we edit. If yeah. somebody doesn't like something. But I guess if you had a custom piece, you could kind of edit it. Yeah. I mean, I've seen and artists edit. They're like, oh, I don't like the way this turned out. And they start up. They'll start right over. Yeah. On the same what I would do is I would just do two pieces. So I would take their feedback of mm -hmm. what they want, what their, their intent is. And then I would just do two pieces at the same time, the same size. One of them has to work for them, hopefully. And then the other one I would just keep and either put in the show somewhere, take it to the gallery, or eventually sell it on my own. Yeah. So just what kind gallery, of thinking. What gallery do uh, you work with? I work at Haley Gallery in New Albany. Haley Gallery. That one I don't know. Yeah, and then I 
run uh, my own business outside of 400 West Rich in Franklinton. Tell our audience about 400 West Rich. I hope we're going to record this and post this later, but I've driven by. Franklinton's exploded. I used to be kind of scared to go over there. Um, <laughs> not going to lie. Um, I got called to go do a job over there about 10 years ago, and they asked me where to start, and I was like, with a bulldozer? <laughs> because, I mean, it was, it was that bad, but it's really been an up-and-coming area, and 400 West, West, West Rich Street is an artist collective, right? Yeah. We yeah, have a so great co is Mission Coffee stand there? For businesses, and there's also tons of artist studios, so... I moved in there in August and have been there ever since. Uh, we do Frank Franklinton Fridays, which I believe is the first Friday of every month down there. And we open our studios up and the public can come in. Um, Are you sure about that? Month. You sure about that right now? <laughs> oh, it's can coming. The, can, the, can the public come in? I know. I hear they're, as of today, they're loosening the curfew. So Yeah. Well, we'll see. Our next one's on the 12th. So hopefully we don't get shut down to where people can come in. And for me, I love that time to meet like new people. Yeah. So Friday, Franklinton, like I live in the short North and it, I, the short North, let's the arts district, put in more ginger beer. Um, <laughs> the short Too North, <laughs> no, please. Um, <laughs> the short North art district. I mean, I think they really should change the name to the short North's restaurant district. Restaurant district. <laughs> yeah. Because we're a, little, we're a little short on galleries down here. Um, yeah. There's about three that I know of. Yeah, there's and some spectacular ones there. I mean, we've got Sherry. I love uh, Smith Hawkins. Oh, um, my God. They have some great... Um, I, I just remember a artist that was there about a year or two ago, and they froze buckets of paint, and they had them hanging from the ceiling, and they would just let them... She would pull them every little bit, and there were three of them, and she would just let them melt and drip onto the piece it was the coolest thing oh. in my opinion i'm like i could do that and then i'm like no i couldn't like you'd have to freeze the paint it has to be mixed properly who like, has I'm, that kind of time <laughs> you got money to make leave the artwork to us we got yeah. it but yeah they have some great pieces another one of my favorite galleries um i want to say sherry's is it sherry yeah she's right there on high street Sherry Gallery. What's the one that's right across from the old level behind Jenny's? Marsha Evans. Marsha Evans. Yeah, she Evans. yeah. Yeah, I like her gallery a lot. Oh, yeah. Um, she's really I, fun. I patronize them all. <laughs> <laughs> Same. Mike, what you um, got? What do you do? You, I've been doing a lot of oversized pieces in my um, designs. I'm finding these people are building bigger and bigger homes, and the ceilings are getting taller and taller. And yeah. now, architects are putting in windows in very strange places and then we have these big walls and it's like what do you do and i'm every time i bring in some big pieces of art to columbus they seem to sell pretty fast yeah. um what's the biggest size that you've done uh <laughs> recently i had i think it was 50 <laughs> it's huge uh 50 <laughs> That's why it's happy hour. <laughs> yeah. I think it was like 68 by 57. And it sold three hours after posting on Instagram. And it'll be going to a private collection, uh, corporate collection uh, next year. But I tend to work uh, 36 by 48 and up. That's pretty, that's a good size. Yeah, because 36 by 48, which is the size of the painting behind me, is a good entry level. And then... 48 looking, by 40. I'm right looking around year. my house right now trying to figure out. I'm like, that one's about that size. <laughs> see, see, you know what I'm talking about. Yeah. Um, I have size a lot matters of... when it comes to art, people. <laughs> Would you say? Size matters when it comes to art. <laughs> Bigger the better. But yes, don't do come you do... in your house with some small art on a big wall. Oh, my God. So, I mean, scale of art is so important. Scale of furniture is so important. A lot of what I do that people don't realize is space planning. I can walk into a room and determine how big a sofa needs to be. And I see people post things on Facebook. Oh, I just bought this new sofa, but it doesn't fit through my door. Like, how did you not think about that? <laughs> yeah. Like, one of my first things is like, okay, can I get it through the door? Can I get it? I've moved furniture through windows before. So 
And um, you got to do what you got to do to get the job done. Yeah. But when it comes to art, I mean, do you do, like, I know the word trip dick, but what's yeah. the word for a series of so about dip tick, trip tick. Was it dick tick? I don't know what it goes with before. A dick tick, trip tick. You know where your mind is. Dark and stormy, huh? Dark and stormy. Oh my god! I'm getting ready to leave on a flight, like right after this interview. So we have a question. Yeah. So I actually I just did my first one. Um, They're two ten by twenty panels that I'll eventually put together. So they'll be 24 by 24. And then I just uh, got oh. two 24 by 48s that I'm going to paint together. you were telling me about that the other night. Yeah, I'm excited. Because I can actually fit them in my car. <laughs> hey, U-Haul's are really cheap to rent the vans. <laughs> but it like, just takes time. You could, it's so easy now with the pandemic. Like there's an app. You like rent it on the app, scan the van, it unlocks. It's like... It's unbelievably easy these days. I, like, like, that's I, why I have to rent those to get <laughs> art and other things to wear. I've done it. Yeah. I've had to. Because like, anything over 40 inches, I can't take. So I've got to get a U-Haul to shove it in there. Or I just have it delivered. I, do you use an art hanger? How about that? That's a good question. So a lot of times we have we – have, there's a subdivision of our industry where we actually have subcontractors that are art installers. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm pretty good with hanging art, but when it gets up to, I have to get up on a ladder 40 feet. hear me yeah we you're back <laughs> i lost you and he's like what's your password what's your password i'm like great the whole internet probably knows it now. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> i didn't hear it damn um did we have a question is it coming in miles the what lighting of the art so let's talk about lighting art lighting is everything lighting is everything when it comes to interior design and especially when it comes to artwork now, I have a little trick. If you're on a budget and you want to get your artwork lit up, um, you can go to a little website called Amazon.com and type in picture light. And you can actually get, they come in, you can get them with remote controls now. They're LED. There's so many different options. But I have a light over every piece of art in my house. I've seen them like, oh, and, it literally changes everything. It does. Um, this yeah. one that I got here is from Ikea. Really? Yeah. Yeah. It was good, like $25. I mean, that's, that's not, their lighting, their picture lighting <laughs> is not bad. Um, <laughs> they're pic- you're good for picture lighting, good for plants, plates. Please don't buy furniture from Ikea. <laughs> I mean, it's going to fall apart. Eventually, yeah. Um, and an Ikea kitchen, if you want your kitchen to last for three to four years, um, I guess that's where you go to get a disposable kitchen. Yeah, and I think a lot of that has to do with the aesthetic and the price point. But ultimately, your kitchen, if you go to resell your home and someone sees that you don't have, like, top-end cabinets, it's a wrap. Oh, yeah. yeah. It's over. Like, I tried to buy a condo once. My mom went in and saw it. She's like, those cabinets are shit. <laughs> Good Christian <Yeah>. woman. <laughs> like, Those I mean, that's one of the care. first things I will look at. And I, I mean, Ikea cabinet, Ikea is selling refrigerators. They're completely off brand, but they're selling fix, faucets and everything as well. I just, I'm very confused by that because I just know the quality level. But if you're on a budget, even if you're on a budget, call a designer because we have multiple lines and I have a, quick ship cabinet line that's better than Ikea comes in quicker. And my contractors have told me that it's easy to install and it was half the price of an Ikea kitchen. So having a designer is really good. Um, 
for that. Yeah, because you guys know the ins and outs. You guys know things that we just, as a regular consumer, don't know. Yeah. And there's a misconception but we're afraid. Too, that we're always the designers automatically expensive. And that's yes. not the case either. Um, but you get what you pay for. And I can tell you, every, everything that I sell furniture wise or fixture wise, I'm price shopping myself out. And my prices are always 20 to 45% less, if not more than that, than what you can find on Wayfair or anywhere, any normal, any regular store. Um, so that's the benefit of working with a designer, whether it's me or any, any of our design colleagues. If you don't like me, because a lot of people... Um, Does I, that happen? I, oh, yeah, of course. <laughs> you know, gays. <laughs> um, I will be happy. But well, I know every designer pretty much... <laughs> I know every designer in the country, and I'll be happy to refer you to somebody. But I don't compete with anyone or a commission. in the industry. <laughs> no, no, we don't do... I don't even do that. But Oh, I, I need referral dollars. Oh, referral. Pay me in equity. No, we're in a we're in an age now. I just got doing the designers on Social Summit, and I was talking about how we are all connected. And designers used to be very standoffish, and they wouldn't. None of them talk to each other. And I came out of the. I call myself part of the first generation of e designers, where we actually had tools that were not just colored pencils, and we yeah. had technology, and you had the internet to shop off of. And we're very tech savvy in my office. Um, and I'm part of a group of, I'm part of multiple groups of designers. And if I need something or I need to find out what something is, I can snap a picture of it, put it in my group. And one of my designer friends will be like, hey, that's from here, that's from here. You can get it better at this price here. But we're all connected now. Yeah. And the older designers don't get that. And they were all very standoffish um, about being connected. And I wish I could be friends with more Columbus designers. Well, because it's you. also you're competing and it's the same thing in the art business as galleries have the artwork and galleries want to sell the artwork but sometimes it's easier for me to sell direct to a designer than it is for them to go to a gallery and buy it i wish i could figure up figure out the gallery we'll talk about that off camera um <laughs> we'll talk about that off camera but if somebody was looking for you I'm trying to look at what time do we start how am I on time, Miles? It was a little after. It was like closer to like 510, I think. Okay. You know, I have to be at Rickenbacker Airport, which I've never been to. <laughs> and I needed to get out of Columbus. I'm just going for the weekend. I'm flying. Yeah, it was <laughs> they had a flight tonight going to Florida, and I'm going to stay with my designer friend, Trish. And she has a boat and a pool, and there's sun there. So oh, Trish, girl, why did she call me? <laughs> Trish! Hey, if you want to go, I'm sure you can. Allegiant will sell you a ticket. <laughs> hey, but I got, I got a bunch of Delta points I'm sitting on. Let me God, let me grab it. my sun hat. <laughs> <laughs> I love Delta. I haven't even packed. We're getting off here, and I'm packing, and somehow getting to the airport. On time. You don't I'm need clothes where you're going. I don't know. That's black. I'll be. It'll be easy to pack. So, where I'm trying to figure out, since this is the first time we're doing this, I'm reading. <laughs> I'm reading off my um. I'm reading off my, um, what do we call my prompt? The cheers and the witty banter. We've already done that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's witty. Yeah. Um, so I, I, basically for interior design, I can elevate your style and I can elevate the level of quality of furniture that you're buying. And I could tell you what's crap and I could tell you what you're going to get that's good quality. And that you're, it's not going to break the bank. So, yeah. as you know, there are places out there where stuff, I mean, I've seen bar stools that people are like, oh, my bar stool broke. I just bought it six months ago. And this way. <laughs> Time to stop eating those cookies. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, you're welcome. I don't even. So, I was with a friend the other day, and he, he's six, six foot seven Ooh. six foot seven weighs about 300 pounds and he goes i've been the bars and i've sat at the bar stool and the chair just breaks under me and i'm like oh my god josh that's a big but dude that, he's yeah he's he's fun he's fine so 
Give a brief description of how you would design an interior if a client told you they want a design to be created after the cocktail that we're drinking. So, if a client called me and told me that they wanted a dark and stormy interior, I would immediately think of thunder and dark grays, blacks, an angry sky, maybe the lavenders. What's it called? Called red sky at night, sailor's delight, Ooh. red sky in the day. Afternoon delight. <laughs> Runaway was it? But uh, you could tell, like, I would think of like. Oh I would wow! Be pulling My... in dark and stormy. I'd be going with burgundies. I'm trying to think, what else? Greens. What do you think of the colors of this drink? I see yellows, but that's I think a mixture. <laughs> I mean, it almost like looks like Greens, ice. Greens, grays. We did square ice cubes. Geometry, geometric shapes. I one of the series that I was kind of working through. I used tons of squares, and I do you? love like concentric squares. Yeah, I love geometric organic patterns. If you go to my website, I my house should probably be on there. Most of my clients don't let me shoot their homes because we work with a lot of um, uh, people that are they need their privacy. So my house. Dude, I'll be all for it. I'm like, take all the pictures you want. I know some people are like that, and some people are not. But yeah. The good thing is, uh, about uh, not last week, the week before, where where was I last week? About two weeks ago, we just <laughs> launched my first coffee table book. It'll be out in April, and I have a client's house in there, and my house is in there, and it's a group of designers. It's actually Donna Moss's book, and awesome. She's yeah, it's called Best of Show. And I'm really excited about that. Um, but that's coming out. What else do we have to promote? Brandon, tell us about your website. You have one? Yeah. So I just you? actually rebranded my website and changed platform. So brendanspiveyart.com is where you can go through and kind of see what I've been working on. Um, okay. You can also find me through Instagram. And I will link um, out to my website. How did we meet? My... I don't even know. I've not met you in person, have I? No. Have I? I don't. I know. I don't think so. Time. I don't think we've met in person, but we've talked on. Oh yeah. Well, you know, talked all the time just through random the local neighborhood community. apps, lo art app, art connections. <laughs> yeah, but it's cool because as a as a as a painter and a designer, it's like the perfect combination of, like, God, I need something for that, and you can be like, Oh wait, I think I know somebody who's got it. Exactly. Do it. Yeah. It's all a big network. True. Networking is so important in this industry. And like I, said, oh, yeah. I just did the design, it was called the DOS Summit, Designers on Social Summit. So if you're an interior designer watching this, look up um, Designers on Social Summit. And there was a 25 design influencers. I was honored to be number one. Some of my favorite uh, designers were part of it from all over the world. But we did that today and it was amazing. So small bit of what Instagram... Ready banter about small bit of what the so how do we sum this up of what we talked about today? We were all over the board, which I absolutely love. We went from IKEA to high end furniture, talked all about alcohol. Oh, can we talk about ship lap? Motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> Am I allowed to swear on Instagram live? <laughs> <laughs> the cameraman. Just no shame, Joe. Joanna Gates. Joanna Gates. Gates. No shame. <laughs> okay, I love ship. Please let's not do ship lap. And <laughs> let's not and let's end the farmhouse trend. I know we're in Ohio, but it's a trend that's dying, if not dead. And it came in hot. It and came it's, in it's... hot in 2006, and <laughs> it, it's not leaving hot enough. It, it needs to leave. <laughs> it's not leaving fast enough for hot enough. But I had a photo shoot on Friday, and the photographer went to put me in front of a shiplap wall, and there was also a barn door, a sliding barn door. And I go, can you, I go, my brand is anti the two things that you're about to take a picture of me in front of. Yes. Can you do anything but take a picture of me in front of shiplap? Um, now, I have done shiplap, but I do shiplap not the way a normal person would do it. Oh, of I course will, not, you're daddy. Yeah, I will paint a color on the back of a wall and I will take long two by fours 
and pour gasoline on them, light them on fire, and I will run that on the wall with a one-inch reveal of the color behind it. Oh, now, it's a Japanese process, ish. isn't it? Yeah. Um, kind of. Kind of. Kind of. It's a Danny Russo process, too. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, it's but, not that. It's, it's Danny Russo. I mean, I love doing ceruse woods, like any kind of unique woods. The Japanese process that you're thinking of is when the boards are all lined up very close together, um, and they're about one inch thick. I'm talking yeah. about thick. Yeah, the, that's a Japanese process. It, it's Asian-inspired. And I actually have that on a project right now. But um, you're, th these, you're talking about boards that are thinner with a smaller reveal. I'm talking about doing a big, thick board with like two inches between and then a board on top. Not all different color boards. Um, I'm trying to think. Well, that wouldn't be very dandy if it was farmhouse. <laughs> no, no, no. But I love textured walls. And I'm actually, I was on the phone till about one o'clock in the morning last night um, with my client in Texas. And he does a lot of video production. And I found soundproof panels that were all different. Um, they had all different cuts. I'll post them on here, but we're going to install them in a way where they look like one panel and it's going to look at this amazing wall treatment. And I'm kind of excited for them. I ordered six for my warehouse. You'll have to come to my warehouse and see what we have. I would love it. <laughs> and we'll have to go for a real drink sometime, not just. Yes. Yeah. A real dark and stormy. A real. <laughs> oh, let's know let's I... talk about metallics. Cause yeah. I know you use metallics a lot in design and I love metallics. What do you like about them? I just I think it makes everything look really luxurious and kind of rich. And my favorite, one of my favorite pieces is this orb. I love this thing. I can't see <laughs> Miles' camera. Show me the screen. Yeah, it's the have, mustache. We, we need a. We should, we have this big production set up over here, but I brought in like ten seconds before. This I started. know. <laughs> um, show me what he's talking about. I, um, I just think like big, bold accents of like brass or something like oh I, that's cool i l obsessed over this thing for that's months really and cool. i finally bought it but it just adds a pop of richness in the room because i've got kind of like whitish gray wall yeah so i don't have so like, you're the, calling that an orb that's i call that a sculpture i guess it could i think uh mr adler referred to it as an orb but no it, it, it actually is sculpture yeah I called him Mr. <laughs> Did you say Mr. Adler? <laughs> like I'm like like I work for him. Jonathan Adler. Yes. I love his pill collection. Um, oh yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I, and I, I mean, love Damien him. Damien Hurst is my favorite one of my favorite artists. I like my favorite artists that are alive are Jeffrey Coons. He's alive, right? Jeffrey Coons. Um, Lady Gaga does a lot of his stuff, and um, Damien Hurst. And Damien Hurst is just over the top. He did the Palms Hotel in Vegas, which I love. So it's all about mixed metals right now. Silvers, um, brushed brass. Um, oh, don't get me glass, started on copper. Nickels. Copper. Coppers. Rose gold was lit, pushing it a little far for me. I can use that a little bit. I was in a hotel that was all rose gold, and it actually made a little bit of sense. That was about four years ago. Um, rose gold was trending back in about 2012. Yeah, but, yeah. I I love mixing metals, and everybody thinks everything has to be DTM dyed to match. Um, no, my no. There's a pot roast in the fridge. Oh um, my god, it's like don't buy your end tables, coffee table, <laughs> and all that stuff together, and have everything. No, matched. no, I hate buying dining sets together. Like I I will separate everything, and I'm like these clients that walk into Restoration Hardware, I'm like, do you want your freaking whole house to look like a restoration hardware showroom and some people actually do want that but i love and they're curating. beautiful they're they are beautiful i know a lot of the designers holly Hunt's on with them right now ben salamini just left he's a really good designer um but i love pulling other things together and i have i'm looking at my kitchen in the background and i have brushed brass knobs with stainless steel not knobs, but pools with stainless steel appliances. And my husband thought I was batshit crazy when I redid my pools. He's like, but it doesn't match. And I go, it's not supposed to match. It's supposed to be 
different and mixing metals is fine. Like I have a black faucet, brush brash pools, stainless steel knobs and mixed metals has been a thing for the last five years. So yeah, and, you, and you do it with jewelry even like, yeah, people get caught up on mashing things because they, they, they think of fashion. You well, don't have to match everything. Brown and black do go together, in my opinion. It does. And um, you, I just had a good line in my head. Oh, fashion. So from the fashion god, I learned a term. And the term is DTM. Do you want to take a guess on what DTM means? Let's not, because I might. <laughs> <laughs> you just never know what I. I'll use it in a sentence for you. You don't want your house to look DTM. Dead to me. Dyed to match. <laughs> we don't want everything to look like it was dyed to match. Like when you're in fashion, you don't want your whole outfit to look like DTM. Died to match. I got it from Tim Gunn. So he was in Which the work true. Room. And think uh, of fashion now in color. Think of like what Michelle Obama just wore for the inauguration. Oh my God, Their I love that dress. similar. I want that coat. Uh, who doesn't? <laughs> I want that coat. And don't be surprised if it shows but up. But the subtle variation of color in that yeah, that made that if it was one whole low. piece it would have been spectacular and she killed she it looks, she looked amazing she looked um, wealthy yeah <laughs> <laughs> she did um, get it shell get it yeah her lady gaga looked amazing jennifer lopez looked amazing um, as always i'm not gonna say i'm friends with but my best friend who you may know joey zingardi um he lives in new york now his identical twin brother rob is JLo stylist and he was standing at the inauguration and he styled JLo for um she's always flawless for that event but, but yeah. that's how fashion and home decor there's similar rules to that mixtures of texture color hue like yeah all... and when, I don't understand why these some people they'll go out and they're like oh I spent eight hundred dollars on this handbag and I'll interview millennials sometimes, and they think that a sofa should cost $800. Well, okay, you're using that handbag maybe once for a night's occasion or something, and you want to spend $800 on your sofa that you're using every day. Like, that sofa is not going to last for $800. No. So that's, no. Us, that's always, we're always trying to explain and teach and educate our clients. Exactly. Um, it's knowledge is power. Yeah. Do we? <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes, queen. <laughs> I don't even know if you're gay or not. This is a very gay podcast, blog. I don't know what It's all doing. good in the hood. But <laughs> I don't even know what, what you are. And I don't judge people by anything other than personality, I guess, the way, <laughs> the way I'm treated. Do we? Can you see any questions? My videographer happened to leave the room. Do we no, but we've got some local artists. Anybody? on here which is kind of cool yeah i'm gonna try do you know how to download this and record it i think it'll it automatically do it working on it will it and yeah as soon as you end it this. miles is there any questions for me so guys i'm danny russo obviously you can follow me here <laughs> danny russo on instagram my website is danielhome.com dannyrusso.com my hashtag is DFR, stands for Daniel Francis Russo. Oh, Francis, how formal of you. No, my real name's Daniel John, but <laughs> you can guess what that is. <laughs> <laughs> we'll get you a t-shirt and some merch. Yes, yes, Danny all over. <laughs> yes. Do you have any questions for me? No, I'm just excited to like sit down with you and like talk this stuff. Like it's... Thank it's you so, so much exciting for, for being me. A like guest on here, I know this was we we planned this for we planned this for the last few months, and we had to move some things around. But thank you for picking up and taking on this. Oh, thank you for having me. 
Yeah, like, I love talking home interior. I love talking art. So this is like the perfect thing for me. Like, well, we'll have to do it again. I have a podcast called The Design Exchange. That's one thing we could promote. I have a podcast with Melinda Peters Elliott to find designs and interiors. It's called The Design Exchange. I think you can find it on Spotify and Apple. I hate listening to myself talk. So I don't listen to the podcast. I just hear that they're funny. But The Design <laughs> Exchange has a Facebook group. Um, bless you. Did you sneeze? <laughs> Um, but yeah, follow me there. Any other questions? Anybody? Brandon? I'm all good here, man. Thank you for having me. If you want to dark and storm me, special thanks to Adrian Krantz, my, um, design assistant for <laughs> getting me all the ingredients to make this amazing drink. Also, thanks to Dave Hyde Park for showing me how to make the drink. Adrian, also oh, I love video. Hyde Park. <laughs> so, what? We'll I might order time. that for dinner. You could find me there on Fridays, just not this. Friday. I haven't done the Friday. I, well, because I don't go anywhere. <laughs> well, we don't do it because of that. We do our own private. Um, oh, of course. Yeah, we just, we go there Mondays, Tuesdays. Call me sometime. I don't even have your phone number, but text yeah. Text You're like, me, I don't text sit me your pop. phone number if you have my phone number. <laughs> I'll just tell them. I'm like, where's Danny? He's like, oh, he's in the back. Yeah. <laughs> All right. I'm going to go back to Florida. Thank you so much. No, thank you, this. man. And we will talk pleasure. soon. Absolutely. We'll see you All guys. Right. Repost this wherever. We're going to repost it too. You got talk it. See you later. See ya. Peace out. Bye. Bye.